Hey everyone, this is Michael again, and welcome to the My Night Raw review. My Night Raw tonight was from the Golden One Center in Sacramento, California. And My Night Raw tonight, as always, this show was completely fucking awful. God awful show it was tonight. Absolute shit. I mean, nothing happened on the show tonight. I mean, what did we get? We had Austin Theory versus Jeff Hardy. Once again, a rematch. We had uh, Biggie and Drew McIntyre versus Dolph Ziggler and Robert Root. Again, we saw this match two weeks ago on Monday Night Raw. We had Mansoor versus Cedric Alexandra. We had uh, a semifinal match in the King of the Ring, which was Xavier Woods versus Jinder Mahal. And the Queen's Crown semifinals, Dewdrop versus Shayna Baszler. Of course, we had uh, Finn Balor versus Mace. And the main event, Charlotte Flair versus Bianca Belair. But overall, Monday Night Raw tonight, absolutely fucking terrible. God awful show. I feel like WWE has given up creatively on what they decide to put on TV. That's how the way I feel, and that's probably how uh, some of you all feel. I feel like they have given up creatively. They are so creatively bankrupt, in my opinion. I mean, look at the King of the Ring, and look at the Queen's Crown Tournament. The Queen's Crown Tournament is one of the worst things I've seen in, what, seven, eight years in WWE? None of those Queen's Crown Tournament matches went over three minutes. Those ma those Queen's Crown Tournament matches uh, went, let me say, two minutes, the latest. Just this Queen's Crown Tournament was booked like shit by WWE. I mean, the King of the Ring and the Queen's Crown Tournament, WWE booked this all in two weeks. And the only reason why uh, they did these tournaments, these two tournaments, is for ratings. And it's true. I mean, why are we getting the final in the King of the Ring and the final for the Queen's Crown Tournament at Crown Jewel when WWE should have booked the finals uh, for the King of the Ring and the Queen's Crown Tournament at Survivor Series? Does that make sense? I think it does. So they booked this whole uh, King of the Ring, Queen's Crown Tournament in two weeks they rushed uh, both of these tournaments just so we could get to the finals this Thursday at Crown Jewel. They should have saved the finals for both tournaments at the Survivor Series. That's how the way I uh, would have booked it. So, but Queen's Crown Tournament, like I said, one of the worst booked tournaments I've seen WWE do in eight years. Eight or ten years. Awful. But before I start the review, I want to thank you all who uh, watched and you know checked out my birthday stream on Friday. Had a really good birthday. And thank you all for uh, sending in uh, your questions. And also, you know, you guys hanging out on the stream. You know, just, you know, asking me questions also in the chat. You know, I really appreciate that. So... Thank you all for, uh, you know, checking out the stream on Friday, and I hope you all had uh, fun uh, watching uh, watching the stream. You know, I had fun uh, with you guys. You know, also, you know, just from you all, just uh, you know, typing questions and talking in the chat. It was a good stream. So, but, uh, thank you all once again for. Uh, you know, watching and uh, checking out the stream. Really appreciate it. But anyways, let's get on with the review. So My Night Raw opened up tonight with Charlotte Flair, the Raw Women's Champion. My God, what an awful open to My Night Raw this was. So Charlotte ended up coming out. She got on the mic and she was wondering why uh, there's no goodbye celebration for her. And 
she was complaining how uh, the Monday Night Raw roster wasn't lined up out there to say their goodbyes to her. It's because no one cares, Charlotte. She kept saying that there are no thank you Charlotte chants from the crowd. Because nobody wants to see you on TV. It's bad enough we are suffer with you going to Friday nights on SmackDown. So Charlotte was saying that she isn't happy with how she has to defend her Royal Women's Championship against some rookie. And of course that rookie that she ends up saying is Bianca Belair. She was not happy about how she had to defend it against Bianca uh, on her final night tonight on My Night Raw. She kept saying that this is bull crap. Charlotte wants to say that she really thinks there's some kind of conspiracy against her. She wants to say that Bianca Belair isn't even really on the My Night Raw roster yet. And she already has a towel shot at Crown Jewel on Thursday. And Charlotte ended up saying that all she wanted was a ceremony. So she ends up uh, hushing the fans because the fans were chanting, you suck. So we had Bianca Belair. She ended up coming out. Bianca ended up saying that this is no conspiracy. It's justice served. Bianca went on to say that she's done nothing but prove she belongs here. And that she deserves this rematch. So Bianca ended up recalling how Becky Lynch ended up saving Charlotte from Bianca a few weeks uh, ago. Bianca wanted to say that she's the star no matter what branch she's on. So Bianca ended up knocking Charlotte for begging to have a farewell. And she ended up telling Charlotte to take as much time as she needs to say goodbye to the Royal Women's Championship. So Bianca ended up giving Charlotte some advice. She ended up saying that when she comes back to My Night Raw after Crown Jewel, she will have both titles. She'll have the Raw Women's Championship and the Smackdown's champion, the Smackdown Championship. So then Charlotte ended up uh, hitting Bianca Belair. She ended up going for a running kick, but Bianca ended up ducking. Bianca ended up scooping up Charlotte to deliver the KOD. But Charlotte ended up retreating onto the apron. Bianca ended up knocking uh, Charlotte off of the apron onto the floor with a handspring bump. So Bianca ended up standing tall in the ring. She ended up dancing around. And pretty much that was how the segment ended. But awful open to my night roll this was. Charlotte fucking complaining. Saying, oh, why isn't the Raw roster lined up to... Uh, say their goodbyes to me. Why is there no goodbye celebration? Because nobody cares. Like I said, it's bad enough. The fans got to see you on Friday. Now, on SmackDown. And yes, the uh, draft picks uh, that were done, they go into effect starting this Friday on SmackDown. So yeah, get ready to see Charlotte on Fridays. So then we had the New Day. The New Day was backstage with Kevin Patrick. Xavier Woods ended up talking to Kevin Patrick about following the footsteps of some past King of the Ring winners. So Xavier, Xavier Woods ended up calling it his destiny to win. The King of the Ring. Kofi ended up saying that we all know how important this is to Xavier Woods. He ended up saying he will be at ringside tonight to prevent Veer and Shanky from interfering in the match. Kofi ended up saying that Xavier Woods' dream is to become king. So that was basically that. And then we had the King of the Ring semifinals match, Xavier Woods versus Jindam Hall. This was just meh, in my opinion. Xavier Woods ended up coming out, of course, along with Kofi. And we had Jindam Hall 
uh, as Maya and I Raw came back from the commercial. Jinder Mahal was waiting in the ring with Veer and Shanky. Match ended up starting. Jinder Mahal ended up being Xavier Woods down. Uh, and Xavier Woods ended up having some words for Jinder. Xavier Woods ended up delivering a drop kick to uh, Jinder. He was uh, delivering some chops in the corner to Jinder. And Xavier Woods ended up, uh, he kept on chopping uh, Jinder. Xavier Woods ended up mounting Jinder in the corner, and Jinder ended up shoving him off, leveled him with a shoulder. Xavier Woods ended up making a comeback. He was mounting some offense onto Jinder. He went for the cover, and Jinder ended up kicking out too. Jinder got right back up, ended up dropping Xavier Woods in the middle of the ring. He then stomped uh, on uh, Xavier. Xavier Woods ended up getting back up to his feet, but Jinder still kept control on Xavier. Xavier Woods ended up rolling Jinder up for a two count, and Jinder ended up going right back to uh, you know to work on Xavier. So Xavier Woods ended up charging into the corner. Jinder ended up back dropping Xavier Woods. And out to the floor. And Xavier Woods ended up hitting the uh, ring steps. And he was laid out. As uh, Jinder ended up backdropping him uh, over the uh, over the top rope out to the floor. So it was crazy seeing that. You know, Xavier Woods ended up hitting the, uh, the ring steps. And as my eye roll came back from the commercial, uh, Jinder Mahal was in control of the match. And he ended up rolling to the apron, and Xavier Woods ended up rocking Jinder Mahal with the right hand. So, at the end of the match, we had uh, Xavier Woods end up fighting Jinder off, end up knocking him down to the mat. Xavier Woods end up struggling to climb back up to the top, and he walks uh, the top rope. He ended up nailing the uh, elbow drop, and he went for the cover. So there you go, Xavier Woods end up win the match. And uh, post-match, uh, it was announced that Xavier Woods uh, versus Finn Balor is confirmed for the uh, tournament finals at Crown Jewel on Thursday. So Xavier Woods and Kofi Kingston ended up going up to the uh, the throne that was on the stage. Kofi ended up putting the robe on Xavier Woods as he ended up holding the scepter. He ended up raising it in the air. And that was basically that. But overall, very meh match this was. Uh, Xavier Woods versus Finn Balor uh, in the finals at Crown Jewel on Thursday. Uh, looks like it's going to be a good match there. So, And then we saw footage from earlier in the day where Austin Theory was looking on his phone. As Sarah Schreiber ended up walking up to him. And they showed the other uh, footage of how uh, Austin Theory beat Jeff Hardy last week on Austin Theory's uh, re-debut on Monday Night Raw after he was drafted from NXT. So Sarah Shriver ended up asking about his win. But then, of course, we had the circus. Yes, uh, Reginald. Let me get uh, the uh, Woody Woodpecker going. There you go. There you go. So we had Drew Gulak, Akira Tozawa, Drake Maverick end up running by. They were chasing after Reginald with the stupid 24-7 garbage title. So Reggie ended up getting the way and R-Truth ended up jumping out. So R-Truth ended up having uh, words with Austin Theory. R-Truth ended up saying that Austin Theory is an angry man and must want to take some of that anger out in the ring. So Truth ended up saying that he will accept the challenge under one condition. If Austin Theory gets permission from his mom to stay up late. So uh, Truth was like, got him! And then he ended up running away. And that was that. But little by little, just by watching this, you could tell WWE is going to make Austin Theory uh, chase after Reginald for the 24-7 title. It's going to be coming. I see Austin Theory doing that 
at the end of the year. Maybe by December, we'll be seeing him chase after the 24-7 title. Watch. It's going to be coming. Austin Theory is going to be another guy chasing after that title. After that, gar after that garbage ass title. So then uh, we had uh, Mike and I Raw come back from the commercial. Austin Theory was in the ring. And out came R Truth. R Truth ended up stopping on stage. And he ended up saying that he made a mistake. And that he didn't accept the challenge for himself. He accepted the challenge for his friend. So R Truth ended up introducing Austin Theory's opponent. And it was Jeff Hardy. So once again, we get a rematch. Austin Theory versus Jeff Hardy. What was so different than what we haven't seen in the match last week? We saw this match fucking last week. What, what was so different that we didn't see uh, last week in the match that they had? So the match ended up starting. Both uh, Theory and Hardy ended up locking up. Jeff Hardy ended up delivering a counter and a roll-up on Austin Theory. Austin Theory ended up kicking out at two. So Jeff Hardy ended up rocking Austin Theory with a right hand, ended up rolling him up again. Austin Theory was yelling at the referee as Jeff Hardy ended up dropping him and sent Austin Theory out to the floor. So we had Austin Theory end up having Jeff Hardy down in the ring. He ended up uh, stomping on Jeff Hardy. Jeff Hardy got back up. He ended up nailing the inverted atomic drop to Austin Theory. And Jeff Hardy ended up hitting the splash, but Austin Theory ended up kicking out at two. So at the end of the match, Austin Theory delivered a TKO into his knee to Jeff Hardy. And there you go. Austin Theory ended up winning the match. And of course, so we had Jeff Hardy end up going up to the top, delivered a swanton, and then Austin Theory end up uh, crotching him with the top rope. And that's when he uh, laid the, uh, the TKO uh, into his knee to uh, Jeff Hardy. So there you go, Austin Theory won the match. Post-match, Austin Theory ends up grabbing his phone. He ends up laying next to uh, Jeff Hardy and, of course, did uh, took a selfie. Like, And then uh, Jeff Hardy ended up coming up from behind. He ended up dropping Austin Theory with the twist of fate. Jeff Hardy then ended up grabbing uh, Theory's phone. He showed it off to the crowd. Jeff Hardy then ended up laying next to Austin Theory, ended up taking a selfie with Austin Theory while he was down, and that was basically that. Overall, what was so different, uh, like I said, what was so different that we haven't seen uh, in the match last week? Same shit. Same fucking shit. And then we saw Big E. Big E was backstage, and Drew McIntyre ended up approaching him. He kept trying to smooth things over after watching uh, the footage uh, from last week. So Big E ended up Big E ended up doing the same, and he ended up proposing that they coexist tonight because they're going to do what it do on Thursday. Big E ended up saying that made the best man win at Crown Jewel. Big E ended up taking the mic. He ended up doing his introduction, you know, with the, oh, Sacramento, you know, the don't you dare be sour, sour, you know, and then Biggie ended up heading out to the ring, so Biggie ended up making his way out, and Mighty Night Raw went to commercial, and then when Mighty Night Raw came back from the commercial, we saw Adam Pierce and Sawyer the Ville backstage, and they were talking about how they will go bigger and better than ever next week. For the season premiere of Monday Night Raw. And WWE, they have been doing this every year. Where they say, oh, season premiere of Monday Night Raw. Or season premiere of SmackDown. Why do we need uh, WWE to call it a season premiere? I, I don't get it. I don't get it. It's not like a TV show. Where it's like, oh, here's a new season. Season 2. Season three. It, it's not like it's nothing like that. And then Adam Pierce and Sonya Deville go on and say, "Oh, 
they will go bigger and better than ever next week. More like little and shittier than ever next week. That's how I would say it. Because we all know how My Night Raw is. My Night Raw is absolute shit every single Monday. Every single Monday night. Little and shittier than ever next week for the season premiere of My Night Raw, as how I would have said it. So Charlotte ended up walking in. She was venting her frustrations to Pierce and DeVille over the lack of a goodbye tonight and having to defend against Bianca Belair. Charlotte ended up saying that she smells a conspiracy, and Sonya Deville ended up dismissing it. She ended up saying that it was only logical to put her and Bianca in the main event. Charlotte ended up saying that she can't be replaced, and she's taking the title to SmackDown. So Charlotte ended up walking off, and that was that. And then we went back to the ring. Biggie was uh, waiting as McIntyre ended up coming out, of course, with his sword, Angela. And then out came the Dirty Dogs, Robert Roode and Dolph Ziggler. Match was just meh, in my opinion. Match started off with Dolph Ziggler and Big E. Big E ended up putting Dolph Ziggler down. Ziggler was uh, talking some trash. He ended up kicking Big E in the gut. And he was showing off. Big E ended up coming right back to drop Ziggler with a shoulder. Went for the cover, which Ziggler kicked out too. McIntyre ended up tagging in. And he ended up taking over and delivered uh, chops to Ziggler's chest. He ended up sending Ziggler into the corner. Ziggler came back. End up uh, rocking McIntyre. Rude end up coming in. Hit up Mal McIntyre in the quarter. Started delivering some right hands. Rude was talking trash to the crowd. And McIntyre end up coming out of the corner. End up leveling Rude with the chop. McIntyre delivered a suplex to uh, Rude. Went for the cover, which Rude end up kicking out too. So Biggie end up uh, taking in. He ended up decking Rude while, uh, while uh, McIntyre ended up holding uh, Rude. Rude turned it around, delivered a right hand to Big E. Big E ended up rocking Rude. He ended up knocking Ziggler off the apron. So we had, as Money Night Raw came back from commercial, Dolph ended up stopping away on Big E in the corner. As Dolph ended up grounding Big E with a headlock in the middle of the ring. Big E ended up getting right back up. And he had Dolph on his back. He delivered a uh, sleeper attempt on uh, Ziggler. Ziggler ended up countering that. He ended up dropping Big E with a neckbreaker. Went for the cover, which Big E ended up kicking out too. So at the end of the match, we had uh, McIntyre end up taking himself in. Big E ended up scooping Root up for the big ending. He ended up staring at McIntyre. McIntyre then gave him a thumbs down for Big E to end up hitting the big ending. Uh, he ended up hitting the big ending on Rude. And he went for the cover. And there you go. Big E and Drew McIntyre ended up winning the match. So Big E and McIntyre coexisted uh, throughout the match. Post-match, we had McIntyre end up coming from behind. Big E ended up turning around. Him and McIntyre end up facing off in the middle of the ring. And both guys end up shaking hands. McIntyre then turned to leave. Big E ended up grabbing McIntyre. And he turned them back around. So they had some words. They end up getting a little heated. And Big E ended up raising the WWE Championship in McIntyre's face. And that was that. But overall, very meh match. And then we had the Street Profits. The Street Profits were backstage. And... Both Dawkins and Ford end up putting the Money Night Raw Tag Team Division on notice. They end up piping up the uh, Tag Team Titles match at Crown Jewel. They were demanding the smoke now that they're back on Money Night Raw. So AJ Styles and Omos end up coming up to them. Styles end up saying that they've tried to bring dignity to the Tag Team Division. 
And now these dorks, referring to the street prophets, show up on my night raw. Omar ended up saying that raw is his house. And Styles ended up reminding him his name is also on the lease. So Styles ended up going on about how they're going to win the titles at Crown Jewel. Styles ended up saying that if they play their cards right and put a hurting on RK Bro, maybe they'll find the names at the top of the list for a shot at the tag team titles. So then Dawkins and Ford end up laughing at Styles. And they end up saying that they're only back on Raw for one reason to put the tag team division on notice. And of course, the Prophets end up saying that they want the smoke. And that was that. So the Prophets are putting the whole Raw tag team division on notice, which there aren't any tag teams on My Night Raw. You know, My Night Raw's tag team division is fucking awful. I said, I could say the same for SmackDown. Both uh, rosters, uh, tag team divisions, are awful. And a draft will not help it. Then we have Mansoor versus Cedric Alexander. Mansoor ended up coming out, and then Mighty Night Raw went to commercial. Then when Mighty Night Raw came back, we had a uh, promo uh, for Kevin Owens' return to Mighty Night Raw. So we saw that. So Mansoor was waiting in the ring as Cedric Alexandra ended up making his way out. Cedric ended up coming out along with Sean Benjamin. And uh, the match ended up starting. Cedric ended up kicking Mansoor in the gut. And Mansoor ended up rolling Cedric up and ended up nailing the moonsault for a two count. We had uh, Mansoor end up working on Cedric against the ropes. Cedric ended up countering and he launched Monsoor. He ragdolled uh, Monsoor and laid a uh, suplex uh, to Monsoor, which was a uh, nice uh, suplex there. Cedric came back and delivered a backbreaker to Monsoor. Cedric ended up mounting Monsoor with some left and rights. Went for the cover. Monsoor ended up kicking out two. Cedric was delivering some elbows to Monsoor's back while he was keeping him down on the mat. So it was back and forth between the both of them. And at the end of the match, uh, Mansoor ended up delivering a flying neckbreaker to Cedric Alexandra. Went for the cover. And there you go. Mansoor ended up winning the match. Post-match, Mustafa Ali ended up coming out. Mustafa Ali came out. He was wearing a suit. So we had Mustafa Ali end up speaking from the stage. And Mansoor ended up uh, again pissed off. He ended up calling Mustafa Ali a piece of trash. He ended up saying that he will be smiling when he beats Mustafa Ali. Because Mustafa Ali, when he came out, he's like, Oh, Mansoor, I see you're still coming out smiling. Why are you smiling? So that's what Mustafa Ali said to uh, Mansoor. So... Mansoor ended up saying that he will be smiling when he beats Mustafa Ali senseless at Crown Jewel, proving to the entire world that Mustafa Ali is just a pathetic, cowardly excuse for a man. So, pretty much, that was basically that. Mansoor was speaking uh, in his language, Arabic, and Mustafa Ali looked shocked on the stage, and pretty much, that was basically that. But, you already know that this match was going to happen. They need to get Mus- they need to get uh, Mansoor a match for Crown Jewel. So they went with uh, him versus Mustafa Ali. The only reason why uh, we're going to see these two fighting is to get Mansoor on the show for Crown Jewel. But overall, this match, Mansoor versus Cedric Alexandro, is a quick match. And then we had a sit-down interview between Bill Goldberg and Bobby Lashley. And they were kept in separate locations. So they ended up having some words. Goldberg ended up saying that he's going to beat Bobby Lashley within an inch of his life at Crown Jewel. 
and he's going to finish off Lashley. So Lashley ended up saying that he's well within his rights to call the authorities for Goldberg threatening his life. You know, I'm saying that's not uh, how the Almighty operates. Lashley then brought up Goldberg's son. Goldberg ended up warning Lashley. He ended up saying the more he talks about his family, the worse the beating is going to be. Goldberg ended up saying to Lashley that in 72 hours, his ass is his. And there's nothing that Lashley can do about it. So Lashley ended up saying that Goldberg can't kill him and that he will have him begging for forgiveness. So Lashley ended up walking off. He ended up saying uh, there's nothing to stop him from ending Goldberg's career. And that's when Lashley ended up walking off. And that was that. So then we saw Randy Orton and Matt Rowe backstage. RK Bro. So, Randy Orton was getting annoyed by Matt Riddle. Matt Riddle ended up asking what Randy Orton has in store for the Street Profits for tonight. Or I'm saying that the plan is to go to the ring and win. Then go to Crown Jewel and also win again. So, Orton then ended up asking Matt Riddle if he wants to smoke. And Matt Riddle does. So Orin ended up telling him, let's go get some smoke. And that was that. And then we had Randy Orton and Matt Riddle, RK Bro, versus the Street Profits. So we had Randy Orton and Matt Riddle end up coming out first. So then Mighty Night Raw went to commercial. Then when Mighty Night Raw came back from the commercial, we had a video package. For Keith Bearcat Lee. And once again, WWE uh, fixes something uh, that is not broken. If it's not broken, don't fix it. So they end up stripping uh, Keith Lee's uh, name. They end up stripping the Keith out of his name. And so now they're calling him Bearcat Lee. Bearcat Lee is what they're calling him. And he's gonna, uh, he's coming to Mighty Night Raw next week. Unbelievable. Did they really need to take uh, Keith's first name out and just now they're calling him Bearcat Lee? Are you kidding me? When is Keith Lee's contract up with WWE? Man, when his contract is up, everyone, including me, is going to love seeing him if he goes to AEW. He'll be treated there uh, much better, of course. But WWE, how much more can they bury Keith Lee? Calling him Bearcat Lee. Unbelievable. Let's just keep burying Keith Lee even more. Fucking Bearcat. Awful. God awful. So then the Street Profits end up coming out. Montez Ford, Angel Dawkins. The match started off with Ford and Matt Riddle. Matt Riddle ended up going behind. He ended up slamming Montez Ford. He went for armbar. Ford ended up getting out of the armbar. Ended up slamming Matt Riddle. Ford went and did a headlock on Matt Riddle. And Ford ended up flipping out of the corner to show Matt Riddle up. Dawkins ended up coming in. Dawkins and Ford ended up double teaming Matt Riddle as Dawkins then nailed a drop kick to Matt Riddle. He went for the cover. Riddle kicked out at two. Dawkins ended up going for Orton, but he ended up backing off the apron. Riddle then ended up dodging uh, the double team from the Profits. Orton ended up sending Dawkins into the apron, and it was back and forth. Matt Riddle delivered a springboard moonsault to take Dawkins down at ringside. Ford then end up running the ring, end up leaping out with a dive. He end up taking uh, Orin and Riddle down. And so Mighty Night Raw went to commercial. 
Then when Monday Night Raw came back from the commercial, we saw Randy Orton was in control of the match. He was going at it with Montez Ford. Ford ended up backsliding Orton uh, for a two count. Orton ended up coming right back and leveled Ford with a right hand. Matt Riddle came in, delivered a gut wrench soup, a gut wrench power slam. So Riddle ended up grounding Montez Ford with a headlock in the middle of the ring. So at the end of the match, uh, we had uh, we had AJ Styles' music end up hidden. So we all thought that uh, AJ Styles was going to come out from the stage, but no, Omos end up coming out. Omos ended up making his way down, and Orton was looking at uh, Omos. He had turned around to see AJ Styles deliver the phenomenal forearm. So Styles then uh, laid the phenomenal forearm to Orton, and the referee ended up calling for the match, so the match ended in a disqualification. Post-match, Matt Riddle ended up meeting Omos at ringside. Omos ended up choke slamming uh, Riddle on the edge of the apron. Omos then came into the ring, and him and Styles ended up destroying Montez Ford with a double team. Styles ended up yelling uh, at uh, Orin and Montez Ford while they were down. Styles then saw Randy Orton uh, slowly getting back up to his feet. Omos ended up charging in, and he delivered a kick, a huge kick, to Randy Orton, which laid Randy Orton back out. And we saw just Omos and Styles end up standing tall. And that was that. But overall, this was a uh, okay match here between Randy Orton and Matt Riddle versus the Street Profits. And then we had a video package showcasing Becky Lynch coming to Monday Night Raw next week. So there you go, Becky Lynch uh, you know, coming to Monday Night Raw next week. Of course, got dra- she got drafted to Monday Night Raw along with her husband, Seth Rollins. And then we had Shayna Baszler versus Dewdrop. Semifinals match in the Queen's Crown Tournament or the uh, Queen's Shit Tournament. I'm not going to call it Queen's Crown. I'm going to call it the Queen's Shit Tournament. Because this tournament was booked like shit. I said earlier in the video, the Queen's Crown Tournament is one of the worst uh, things I've seen WWE book in the last eight years. No match in this tournament went uh, three minutes. This match was fucking awful. So we had Shayna Baszler end up coming out first. Mine Night Raw went to commercial. And then when Mine Night Raw came back from the commercial, we had Dewdrop end up coming out. And the winner of this match will face Lena Vega in the finals at Crown Jewel. So Dewdrop ended up cutting a uh, promo. She was talking about how this insecure bully, Shayna Baszler, will find out who she is as she becomes... Queen Dewdrop. And then Zelina Vega ends up coming out. Zelina Vega then stopped on stage. She ended up putting on the crown and the throne. And the match got on the way, which this match was awful. Shayna Baszler ended up locking up a Dewdrop. Shayna Baszler ended up delivering some kicks to Dewdrop. Dewdrop ended up chasing her, ended up chasing Shayna Baszler and tossed her across the ring. Baszler ended up blocking another throw by Dewdrop. She started uh, throwing some kicks uh, to Dewdrop's leg. So Dewdrop ended up blocking some more kicks uh, from Shayna Baszler. She ended up slamming Shayna, Shayna Baszler and delivers a corner cannonball. Dewdrop ended up scooping Shayna Baszler for a slam. Baszler ended up turning that around, locked in the care for the clutch. So Dewdrop ended up escaping the care for the clutch. She ended up slamming uh, Shayna Baszler to the mat. Dewdrop ended up going for the crossbody. Shayna Baszler dodged it and applied the uh, clutch on the mat. So Shayna Baszler ended up keeping the care for the clutch locked in. Dewdrop ended up rolling back onto Shayna Baszler. She ended up turning the care for the clutch into a pin. And there you go. Dewdrop ended up winning the match.
are, and I went, are you kidding me? Dewdrop won the match, and now she's facing Zelina Vega Thursday at Crown Jewel? Are you fucking kidding me? The wrong woman won the match. Should have been Shayna Baszler. So post-match, Zelina Vega, she's smiling. She's looking on from the throne on the stage. Dewdrop ended up rolling out to the floor, celebrating. And, of course, Dewdrop ended up stopping on stage. Her and Zelina Vega had some words. And that was that. But I don't give a shit about this tournament. I do not give a shit about this final match at Crown Jewel on Thursday. Hell, just from right there with Dewdrop winning, Zelina Vega might win the match. She's going to become Queen Vega or Queen Zelina. I may be wrong on that. Maybe WWE will put it on Dewdrop. So we'll get Queen Dewdrop. Awful. I don't give a shit about the final match on Thursday. I don't. And then we add Nikki A.S.H. and Rhea Ripley. They end up approaching Bianca Belair backstage. Both Nikki and Rhea Ripley end up welcoming Bianca to uh, My Night Raw, to the My Night Raw brand. And Nikki end up giving uh, Bianca a Raw uh, hat. So Bianca end up appreciating it. She ends up saying nothing will get in the way of winning the Raw Women's Championship. So that was that. And I'm like, you know, Nikki and Rhea Ripley, they're the uh, Women's Tag Team Champions. And I'm like, how did Rhea Ripley get the title? Because there was an article that somebody stole Rhea Ripley's bag with the title. I'm like, how did she get the title back so fast? When the article came out yesterday, well, you've seen this now, it's Tuesday, but the article came out on Sunday, so I'm like, how does she get it, how does she get it back? You know, Walter uh, went through the same thing uh, when, he was the NXT, when he was the NXT UK champion. He had the, the title stolen from him. So I'm like, how did Rhea Ripley uh, get the title back? Just like that. A day after that article came out. Then we had Finn Balor versus Mace. Finn Balor, this was an easy win for Balor here. Balor ended up coming out first. And we had Xavier Woods on the stage as Money Night Raw came back from the commercial. Xavier Woods was posing with the King of the Ring throne and the crown and the scepter. And then Mace ended up coming out. Of course, uh, WWE broke up uh, Mace and T-Bar. T-Bar is now on SmackDown. Mace is on Monday Night Raw. Mace, uh, I said it uh, before when I talked about the draft. Mace, he's not going to go anywhere on Monday Night Raw. Mace, uh, with WWE Creative, uh, I have to say, he Mace is going to get buried. And we saw him lose this match tonight against Balor. We all knew that Balor was winning this match. So the match ended up starting. Both Balor and Mace ended up going at it. Mace delivered a knee to uh, Balor's gut. Delivered a takedown. He went for the cover. Balor kicked out of two. Mace ended up launching Balor into the corner. He ended up getting hit with a kick. Balor ended up fighting off, but Mace ended up uh, decking Balor. Mace delivers some body shots in the corner to Balor and then a running back elbow. So they end up running the ropes. Mace end up slamming Balor again. Mace end up grounding Balor with one arm. And at the end of the match, we had Balor end up dropping Mace. He ended up going up to the top, delivered the coup de grace. And there you go. Balor end up winning the match. Post-match, we had Balor end up going up to the stage. Balor end up standing with Xavier Woods down. Woods was taunting at Balor. Woods end up pointing the scepter at Balor. Balor then grabbed the scepter, end up yanking Xavier Woods down off the uh, platform. And Balor and Woods end up facing off. Kofi Kingston end up coming from the back. 
he ended up trying to calm things down between Balor and Xavier Woods. And that was that. But this could be a good match uh, Thursday at Crown Joe between uh, Balor and Xavier Woods. And then we saw the Viking Raiders. The Viking Raiders were backstage. John Morrison, he was sitting down. He was meditating. And I don't know why Jinder Mahal wasn't with him. So uh, Jinder could teach uh, Morrison how to do Shanti. Yeah, you all remember that with Jinder Mahal. You know, when he used to do Shanti. Or Shitty, as I would call it. I said that last week also. You know, have just have Jinder Mahal there with John Morrison meditating and going, Shanti. So John Morrison up saying that he is still on a journey looking for his wandering sheep so that he can share his innermost thoughts with the rest of the world. So both the Viking Raiders wonder what good the chi is if it's not used to raid. So both the Raiders, the Viking Raiders end up walking off, and then Morrison end up going back to just meditating. So this is what they have for John Morrison while the Miz is on Dancing with the Stars. This is what they have Morrison do, just meditating. Throw in Jinder Mahal, and you'll have, oh, him and Morrison together. Just have Jinder Mahal bring back Shanti. Main event, Bianca Belair versus Charlotte Flair for the Royal Women's Championship. So Bianca Belair ended up coming out first. She was swinging her hair around. Then uh, My Night Raw went to commercial. Then when My Night Raw came back from the commercial, Charlotte ended up coming out. So we had the match end up starting. Both Bianca and Charlotte end up locking up. Charlotte ended up taking Bianca Belair down. Belair delivered a slam to Charlotte. Charlotte ended up uh, decking Bianca with a back elbow. So Charlotte ended up kicking Bianca Belair, ended up taking it to the corner. Bianca ended up flipping away onto the second rope. She was mocking Charlotte. Bianca ended up coming back with a big shoulder thrust in the corner. And Charlotte ended up turning her around. And it was back and forth between the both of them. Bianca ended up dropping Charlotte on the apron. Charlotte ended up countering and pulled Bianca out to the floor and washed uh, her over the announce table. And Minor Rock went to commercial. Then Minor Rock came back and Bianca Belair ended up countering Charlotte in the ring with a slam. Bianca ended up going to handspring back at uh, Charlotte, but Charlotte ended up kicking her. Charlotte started delivering some chops into the corner. It was back and forth again between the both of them. And Charlotte was shown bleeding from her mouth. And both uh, Bianca and Charlotte were trained more offense. Bianca ended up laying the moonsault. And Bianca was talking some trash. She was waiting for Charlotte to get back up. Charlotte ended up, uh, or uh, Bianca end up grabbing Charlotte for a uh, vertical suplex. She ended up holding Charlotte in the air. Bianca ended up stopping Charlotte while she was down. So we had uh, Bianca end up going for a splash in the middle of the ring, but Charlotte ended up getting her knees up. Charlotte then rolled Bianca up for a two count. She then powered up for a power bomb, and she went for another cover, which uh, Bianca ended up kicking out of two. So Charlotte was stomping on Bianca. She ended up climbing up to the top for a moonsault. So Charlotte then hit that awful looking moonsault. And she ended up laying on her feet as Bianca ended up moving. And then Charlotte then delivered a follow-up moonsault, which looked awful again, onto uh, Bianca. She went for the cover, and Bianca ended up kicking out a two. So uh, Charlotte was uh, frustrated. So, we had Bianca Belair end up catching Charlotte with a spine buster, and Charlotte ended up rolling out to the floor to avoid the pin. And then Charlotte ended up saying, oh shit, which it got bleeped out on uh, TV, of course. 
So at the end of the match, we had uh, we had Bianca end up trying to bring Charlotte back in from through the ropes. Charlotte ended up jamming her with the steel chair. The referee ended up calling for the match. So Bianca ended up winning the match by disqualification. Of course, Charlotte still retains the title. So Bianca ended up kicking the chair into Charlotte. She then grabbed it, ended up hitting uh, Charlotte with it, sent her out of the ring. Bianca ended up standing tall uh, in the ring. She ended up raising the chair in the air. And that was how My Night Raw went off the air. Overall, this was a uh, pretty uh, decent match here. I mean, the crowd was into it. But in the end, we all knew it was going to be a fuck finish. So, but overall, My Night Raw, awful fucking show this was. There is no saving this show. There is no saving My Night Raw. This show is literally at the fucking bottom of the barrel. This is the absolute worst that I've seen My Night Raw. I said, there's no saving this fucking awful show. But anyways, that's it for the My Night Raw review. Thank you all for watching. Hope you all enjoyed this review. Definitely give the video a thumbs up. Comment, subscribe. And until next video, I'll see you all later.